What's going on guys? So I've purchased a set of the Mountain Off-Road Enterprise Hida Steps for my 2020 Rubicon. Uh, it comes with the factory Rubicon rock rails and so we wanted some steps for it. This Jeep's getting a lift soon and my wife is five feet and complains bitterly about trying to get up in this Jeep. So we've purchased these Hida Steps. Uh, these are expensive. Um, I think for we're getting one for each door. It's about five or six hundred dollars altogether for them, but they are very well made. And I'm going to show you how to put these on. They are kind of a real pain um, until you figure out a uh, little step here to help you put them on. Basically, they use the same attachment points as the rock rail, so unless you have five hands, it makes it kind of difficult. Anyway, what you're going to want is a set of jack stands that will make things easier. You want a 13 millimeter and a 10 millimeter socket. Impact gun helps. It's not required though. Ratchet. You'll probably need a 13, uh, 13 millimeter wrench. Um, some clippers. And zip ties. These are the key right here. This will make installing these a lot easier. Um, also, you want some just, doesn't matter what size, just some short fat sockets and that's going to help us later and I'll show you how that. Alright, so first step is going to be removing all the bolts um, from your rock rails. So there's going to be three sets of these. It's going to be one bolt in the bottom, these two here, and then you move on down to the middle. We have another one, and these here, so the two on the sides are 10 millimeter, the uh, one big one is 13 millimeter, and then the last one is over here, the 10 millimeter, 10, where'd it go? I'm trying to look through the camera here. 10 millimeter, and then the 13. So, apologize if these camera angles are not exactly great. impact up here. Right. And in the uh, instructions it says to only remove the the uh, bolts that you will be using to put on the steps but I'm gonna just go ahead and remove the whole rock rail because you'll see why later um, but. and you don't have to worry about this falling on your face because it still has these six bolts holding it in on the side here and those uh, it's kind of tight to get with an impact, so I'm going to remove those just with a the 10 millimeter and a ratchet. So, right, so here, see, we're just taking out these little 10 millimeter guys. And once you take these bolt, uh, nuts off here, you still don't have to worry about it falling on your face because the uh, studs are kind of just holding it in place. Just get those loose all the way down the line and then just take them off by hand and uh, you should always get you a little magnet tray it makes keeping track of nuts and bolts much simpler Okay, so I have the rock rail off. I'm not going to show you pulling that off because it's pretty self-explanatory. It just slides out. And I had it resting just under the body on some jack stands. And now I'm going to show you why you want these guys. So I'm going to take the base um, of the, the step. And uh, just of note, these flat things are going to go facing this way against the rock rail, or actually against the uh, pinch seam here. 
and uh, the studs from your rock rail are going to go through the pinch seam holes you see right there and then through these and then you'll put your nut back on. So I'm going to try to film this. It might be kind of hard one-handed. I don't have a tripod with me right now. But basically, you're going to carefully compress these and insert the nut in there to hold it in place. And I don't think I'm going to have a good way to show you that, so I'm just going to set the camera down and do it real quick. Now, be very careful doing this. You do not want to catch your finger in there. And so when handling these, don't put your fingers anywhere near that in case that nut pop, uh, the socket pops out because it will not feel good. That spring is very strong. Um, so do this at your own risk, obviously. But this makes installing these much, much easier. And you're going to do that on both of the ones if you're putting it on the front and the back. Back under the Jeep here, the I'm going to do the front one first here. And what we're going to do is take the bracket and we're going to slide it up here and I'm going to have to adjust my placement of the rock rail here but basically we want to zip tie this bracket in place here and here, I don't know if you can see that or not, right there. And so I'm gonna put my zip ties in so this loosely is held in place. You wanna get the zip ties real tight, but it's still gonna hang down. But that'll still make uh, putting the rock rail back up here much easier. In so, place, as you can see, this is the front one. And then over here, we have the rear one. And of note, you see, I actually didn't need to put the socket to force this one at a right angle. This one has enough room back here to just go in at 180 degrees like that. So no point in putting the socket in on the rear. Um, but now I'm going to get the rock rail back in place. And basically you want to slide these tabs in and then you'll line these, let's see if you can see them, these studs into the six holes um, and that can be a bit of a process but you'll get there this by the way would be much easier with uh, extra set of hands um, but we are quarantined these days so I uh, can't get the Jeep Club to help you so anyway I'm gonna do that off camera here um, and I will be back shortly okay I have the rock rail back in place here the studs are in Here's the middle, and then last over here. So what we're gonna do at this point is just put the nuts on the studs. We're not gonna worry about the uh, 13 millimeter bolts yet. We're just gonna get these loosely threaded. The 10 millimeter, let's see. Get these least on there so that this stays in place, and then we can cut those zip ties off. Get them out of the way. They have served their purpose. And over here, I have already carefully removed the socket that was holding this at a 90 degree angle. That's true. You can feel that spring is quite strong, so. But now that that's in place, we don't really have to worry about it. And these will, as we tighten these down, everything will fall into place. So I'm gonna finish threading these 10 millimeter um, nuts on, and then we'll move on to the next part. Okay, I have removed the zip ties and I've tightened down the 10 millimeter studs on all six studs. And now um, we're gonna go ahead and start threading in these 13 millimeter bolts. This one obviously don't have a uh, mount on it, so that one's gonna be pretty easy. Just goes right in there. Get those threaded in good, and then we'll hit it with the impact gun and tighten it up. And the middle one. 
And when you tighten these down on the studs here, everything should line up pretty well. I haven't had any issues. Um, so we'll get that one started. And on this particular one in the back, I it's kind of hard to get with the impact, so I ended up just using the ratchet on these. And then in the back here, so the thing about the back is it'll use a different hole instead of this far hole here, it'll use this one, which means getting under this thing is a little bit of a pain. And we actually may need to loosen these studs to get in here. I didn't think that through. Uh, alternatively, if you really wanted to mess with it, you could take out the spring, but I imagine that would be a pain in the ass to get back in. So I'm just gonna loosen these studs a little bit to give me a little more wiggle room, and then I'll wiggle this back into place, and then we'll tighten it all up. And once all those 13 millimeter bolts are in place and tightened up, we can move on to the last part, which is actually putting the pins through. And uh, then we're pretty much done. So be right back. All right, so on this back mount, um, I found that when these are tightened down all the way, it makes it kind of hard to get the uh, 13 millimeter bolt in here. So what I have done is I have untightened these. And now you can see this will slide in pretty easy. And we can get that started and get it mostly tight. And then we can tighten these back down. And then we should still be able to get a ratchet in here or socket with an extension. Also where the, uh, the uh, 13 millimeter wrench might come into play is when this is back over here, tightened down, you can hit it with this to, to tighten it. Okay, we're almost to the finish line here. All these studs and the bolts are torqued down. I don't have any specific torque information. I just got them nice and tight. And this is the front step. And as you can see, there's spring pressure right here. And then on the back here, same thing. And um, what we're gonna do at this point install our steps and as you can see I have lots of uh, nuts and bolts that I don't need because I have the Rubicon rock rails in the direction of state to skip steps if you have the rock rails because obviously the studs are already in place and you won't need all these extra parts what you will need though is the pins two pins per step and this you need both hands to do so I am not going to show you, but I'll hold it up and demonstrate where these go. So, obviously the step's going to be facing out to the side. The front set of holes is going to line up with the front set of holes in the bracket. These are going to go inside the bracket attached to the Jeep. And uh, I'll have to pry that into place once we have a free hand. but. Anyway, it's pretty self-explanatory. You're going to align those holes in the front, align the holes in the back. You'll have to pry down uh, the bracket here towards you to uh, get that to line up. I find it's easiest to just go ahead and do the front and you'll just push the pin in and there's a, a detent on the end of the pin that holds it in place. And once you have the front in, you can maneuver the back and then pull this down to insert the last pin. Okay, so we have the front set, the front pin in of the bracket. And now what we're gonna do is pry this down and align these. And then you'll just punch the pin right through there. I'm gonna set the camera down for a second to do that. As you can see, we have it in the front section. It's just gonna slide through there. All right, now that pin is in place. 
So both pins are installed. And now this is what we're left with. Same process for the front step, obviously. As you can see, this tucks nice and up and out of the way. That provides a good, strong step. And I will show you the other side, which I have already completed. Now, wait for the camera to focus here. Just catch the front of that. And you're in. And when you take your foot off, it just pops right back up and it's not slamming the underside of your Jeep, so don't worry. It's just it's just the sound of it catching against itself. But yeah, these steps are very solid. They look good. But most of all, they help you get in your Jeep. And right now, this one's just at the factory Rubicon height, but it's getting a, a um, rock crawler three and a half inch X-Factor lift shortly, and these will definitely come in handy. If you have any questions about the install, please leave a comment, ask a question. Um, if this was helpful, you know, obviously like, and uh, subscribe for more uh, videos. Appreciate you watching.